it's pretty much par for the course for actors to get all close and familiar when they have been making sweet, sweet movies together. Often enough, it is impossible to miss them waxing romantic about how lifelong friendships have been formed, with big-name casts going out and getting matching tattoos and showing up all over each other's social media like the BFFs they now are. Aww. But sometimes, the truth behind the scenes is a little less savoury. Familiarity breeds contempt as much as fondness, or at least that's what my parents said when I left home, and coming back time and again to play best friends, surrogate family members, or even lovers on screen can have the opposite effect on the feelings of the cast in real life. Over time, mild irritation can become seething resentment, and little rivalries can grow into full-blown grudges. Yes, the stars will keep coming back for sequels, but it won't be because they can't wait to reunite with their on-set family. It'll be purely for the money and the fame. I hope you're listening, What Culture colleagues. I am the frenemy of all who work with me, Bash from What Culture, and these are nine popular movie casts that hate each other. 9. Magic Mike Steven Soderbergh's Magic Mike tells the story of Adam, a young college dropout played by Alex Pettifer making his way in the world of male stripping under the mentorship and occasional rivalry of Channing Tatum as the title character. But by the sequel, Pettifer's Adam was nowhere to be seen. Former teen heartthrob Pettifer already had a bit of a reputation as being egotistical, difficult to work with, and destructive. Tatum, therefore, was not keen on Pettifer's casting, and made that well known even after Soderbergh insisted on it. Between production and reshoots, this all boiled into a serious falling out after Pettifer rented a New York apartment from a friend of Tatum. Pettifer claimed that the apartment was infested with mould and moved out, still owing months of rent, leading Tatum reportedly to tell him, don't f*** with my friends, pay the f***ing money, don't be a clown. The reshoots were a tense affair, with the cast siding with Tatum against Pettifer, who was essentially frozen out. With Tatum a producer on the sequel and Pettifer's original champion Soderbergh no longer in the director's chair, Pettifer was not asked back for Magic Mike XXL. 8. The X-Files Back in the 90s, Mulder and Scully were everywhere, from Simpsons guest slots to Catatonia songs. It was only a matter of time then before TV's supernatural truth seekers would make it onto the big screen, which they did with 1998's X-Files Fight the Future. Unfortunately, the movie also took place at the time of growing tension between stars Gillian Anderson and David Duchovny. Over time, both actors were worn down by the intensity of the show's schedule and their different working methods, as Anderson was much more of a multi-take perfectionist. By the time of Fight the Future, their strained relationship, not helped by the fact that they were equal leads but Duchovny was paid twice the salary, was manifesting itself in either not talking to each other or petty squabbles over irrelevant details. Duchovny later admitted that the crucible of doing that show made monsters out of the both of them, and Anderson corroborated by saying there were definitely periods when they hated each other. She continued with, We didn't talk for long periods of time. It was intense, and we were both pains in the arse for the other at various times. Time Apart seems to have done both of them some good, however, and on returning for belated sequel X-Files I Want to Believe six years after the show's finale and a decade after the previous movie, Duchovny and Anderson had a new level of respect for each other and emerged better friends than they ever had been before. 7. Blade Trinity There are still some who think that the announcement of a Blade reshoot should instead have been a return for original star Wesley Snipes. Given his behaviour on the set of The Last Blade, though, that seems unlikely. Snipes reserved his worst behaviour for David S. Goyer, writer of the first two parts and promoted to director here, at one point throttling him and later only communicating via post-it notes which he signed in character. His castmates did not go unaffected though. Patton Oswalt, who played a supporting role in the movie, later recalled the frustration of Snipes constantly smoking jazzy cigarettes and filming whilst high, refusing to appear for any shots that didn't require his face in them, deferring instead to a body double and, as well, never calling any castmates by name. Snipes only ever referred to female lead Jessica Biel as the girl. Ew. Co-star Ryan Reynolds received his fair share as well, with Snipes dubbing him that cracker and constantly saying things like, tell that cracker to get his lines right. The ever-competitive Reynolds responded by ad-libbing huge amounts of new dialogue, much of which ended up being the most entertaining parts of the movie and significantly increased his screen time compared to the frequently absent Snipes. 6. The MCU 
Right from the start, Marvel had issues with trying to make their stars get on. Especially when in their very first movie, they gave a far more sizable paycheck to supporting player Terence Howard than Robert Downey Jr. in the title role as Iron Man. Once it was clear that Downey was the man to lead the whole mega franchise into blockbuster domination, his salary shot up, with Howard refusing to take a pay cut and being removed from the series in place of Don Cheadle. Howard, blaming Downey personally, spent years bitter and angry at his former co-star. Meanwhile, the sequel's villain, Mickey Rourke, is also nursing a pretty public resentment against Iron Man and Marvel in general. The star of Marvel's second feature, The Incredible Hulk's Edward Norton, was also cut from the rest of the franchise to be replaced with Mark Ruffalo. The reason Marvel gave for not wanting to continue to work with the notoriously difficult actor well, that would be the need for an actor who embodies the creativity and collaborative spirit of the other talented cast members, so they said. Perhaps a dig at his constant rewriting of the Hulk script, something that co-star Tim Roth was none too keen on. 5. Kill Bill When Tarantino was talked about potentially making Kill Bill 3 in the past, he has suggested that his plot might involve Nikki being trained by returning deadly viper L Driver, left blinded but not necessarily dead by Uma Thurman's Beatrix Kiddo in Volume 2. One minor stumbling block there, though, may come from the fact that Daryl Hannah, who played Elle, and Thurman hated each other almost as much as their characters did. As Vivica A. Fox described it, they had that blonde competition going on, adding that it was a pissing contest between the two. By the time of Volume 2's premiere at the Cannes Film Festival, the movie's two stars had to be kept apart, having their own separate tents for the movie's after party. Meanwhile, Thurman and Tarantino's relationship, previously being one of artist and muse closeness, became severely strained as the production of one movie sprawled into two. Especially after the director pushed his star into a dangerous car stunt which left her with permanent damage to her neck. This rift has only recently begun to heal when Tarantino finally acquiesced to Thurman's request for footage of the crash and the production's negligent attitude to safety. It's hard to say if any of these relationships could survive Volume 3. 4. Blade Runner for a film widely regarded as a modern classic, Blade Runner not only flopped on release, but was also an enormously difficult production. Over long, grueling night shoots, British director Ridley Scott clashed with his American crew before badmouthing them in the British press, and fought with star Harrison Ford. All of this meant that the Blade Runner set was not the happiest of places to be whilst it was going down, and that extended to the cast behaviour too. Ford, already grumpy with Scott's direction, also had a terrible relationship with his replicant love interest, Sean Young, who was struggling with a growing alcohol problem which defined her difficulty on movie sets. Their relationship was so sour that their love scene, which does indeed today come across as unpleasantly nasty and coercive, was referred to by the crew as a hate scene. By the time of the next movie in the series, decades later sequel Blade Runner 2049, Ford retained a major role, whilst Young's Rachel only appeared in a digitally regenerated cameo with the actress only present to coach her double. I'm not in it enough was her frank view of a sequel that she found depressing, even though the whole storyline is about my character. 3. Sex and the City on screen, they were one of the most beloved and acclaimed depictions of female friendship. But away from the cameras, the women of Sex and the City have a far less tight and permanent bond. In particular, there has been no love lost between lead Sarah Jessica Parker and fan favourite Kim Cattrall. At the time that their acclaimed HBO show was airing during the late 1990s and early 2000s, as well as during the significantly less acclaimed pair of movies in 2008 and 2010, the cast strenuously denied repeated rumours of a feud. Since plans to make a third movie fell apart, largely as a result of Cattrall's lack of commitment, the knives have really been out, with Cattrall stressing that the cast have never really been friends in the first place. Things really came to a head when Parker wrote public condolences on social media for the death of Cattrall's brother. Cattrall responded by calling her co-star a hypocrite, accusing her of exploiting Cattrall's family tragedy to boost her nice girl persona, and adding, Your continuous reaching out is a painful reminder of how cruel you really were then and now. Jesus! 2. Star Wars after 40 years of an epic space saga, Star Wars' cast of characters and actors have come and gone. Two, however, remain virtually ever-present since the opening scene of the very first movie, droid duo C-3PO and R2-D2 and the men inside their metal casing, Anthony Daniels and Kenny Baker. But whilst the characters bickering conceals a deep bond of lasting affection, for the actors all there is beneath their metal shells is a decades-long resentment. 
Baker sees Daniels as distant and snobbish, looking down on his co-star, both literally and figuratively, referring to how Daniels would never socialise or drink with castmates and was actively rude about attending conventions. Daniels, meanwhile, views Baker's role inside the diminutive astromech droid as not really acting and not adding anything to the movie. He might as well be a bucket, he told the Mirror back in 2011, suggesting that Baker's name was only in the credits as a courtesy. Baker, for his part, has said that Daniels has no time for any of the other actors, not just me, and none of them have a good word to say about him. I just don't like him and have never understood what his problem is. 1. The Fast and the Furious they may be obsessed with referring to themselves as family, but the Fast and the Furious franchise is probably the most dysfunctional family of the bunch. And perhaps the most realistic, since they all hate each other. By the time that the franchise actually hit its groove with series high point, Fast Five, tensions were definitely present between its testosterone fueled alpha male stars, in particular Vin Diesel and newcomer Dwayne Johnson, leading to absurd contractual stipulations about the number of punches thrown and damage done in fights having to remain equal. By the time of the eighth episode, The Fate of the Furious, Diesel and Johnson were kept apart, filming as few scenes together as possible. Even so, Johnson's Instagram post claiming his candy ass, chicken male co stars don't conduct themselves as stand up men and true professionals was generally assumed to be a thinly veiled jab at Diesel. Johnson, instead of appearing in the ninth film in the main series, decided to dedicate his time to his own spin off alongside Jason Statham in Hobbs and Shaw the existence of which also seems to have driven a wedge between him and franchise co-star Tyrese, who accused Johnson of breaking up the Fast family for selfish gain. Now Hobbs and Shaw has been released, Tyrese has once again added fuel to the feud fire by posting, folks called me a hater and attacked me for speaking out. Breaking up the family clearly doesn't have the value that one would assume it does. Oof, they really do take the whole family thing quite seriously, don't they? And that's our list. Which cast issues surprised you the most? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. I've been Ash and this has been What Culture. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and come back again soon for more piping hot content. Thanks for watching.